In this video, we're going to work through the basics of HSM Works Turning. When you're modeling in SolidWorks, the Feature Manager design tree contains a list of all the features used to model a part. As we begin the CNC programming process, we'll use the CAM Manager tree to contain a list of all of the machining operations. We're going to start by facing off the material on the front side of the part. So let's go ahead and select the turning dropdown and select Face. We're immediately presented with an orange preview of the current stock, which was automatically defined, as well as a blue preview outlining the model that we'd like to machine. In the Property Manager, we can define the tool that we'd like to use. So I'll select Library and click New Tool to create a new turning tool. On the Insert tab, we're going to use an ISO standard 80 degree diamond insert and let's go ahead and define that as a half inch insert with a standard 1 64th corner radius. The holder looks fine, so we'll go ahead and select OK. And our tool has been created, so we can press Select to use this tool. A quick on-screen preview is showing us both the tool as well as a blue line indicating where the toolpath is going to be. Let's go ahead and select OK to produce the toolpath. We can now see the CAM Manager is beginning to be populated with the operations we're using to machine this part. In addition to our facing operation, we also have a job. Although jobs can be created manually prior to creating any machining operations, if no job has been created, one will be created automatically on the fly using best practices. Let's go ahead and edit this job and take a peek. You'll see the job type was automatically defined as a turning job and we're machining the entire part model. Had we been working in an assembly or multi-body part mode, we would need to define the specific components we wanted to machine. Our stock was defined as cylindrical using a radial offset from the largest diameter of the part. Let's make a change here and instead use a stock radius so that we can define the stock as the exact diameter of the bar stock we could be using to machine this part. Additionally, we're going to add a one inch backside offset so that we can part this piece off without interfering with our chuck. With a few changes made to the job setup, we can select OK and then regenerate the toolpath so it updates to the new stock diameter. At this point, we're ready to begin profiling the part. So let's go ahead and select the turning drop down again and select Turning Profile. We're going to use the same tool and move to the Geometry tab to begin defining the area of the part we actually want to machine. By default, the operation is going to be contained within the extents of the part. However, in this case, I want to machine beyond the back side of the part. So let's turn on confinement and move down to the area that allows me to add a backside offset. When I enter a quarter inch backside offset, you'll see the yellow preview indicating the containment area for this toolpath expand beyond the back of the part. Let's select OK and see how this toolpath looks. The operation is machined everything that it can within the containment boundary using the given tool. And our orange preview is updated to represent the in-process stock. We're going to remove the remaining stock using a profile grooving operation. For this operation, I can select my library, and instead of creating a new tool, I'll simply go to one of my existing libraries and reuse a grooving tool that I've already defined. On the Geometry tab, we're going to enable confinement and select two edges to define the boundary in which to contain the toolpath. Alternatively, I could have selected a combination of edges and faces. In addition, we only want this operation to remove the stock that's remaining from the previous operation, so I'm going to enable rest machining. I can select OK, and we have a nice grooving operation that's removing all of the remaining stock within our containment boundary. 
The last operation we need to do is a parting operation. And I'm going to add this one by right clicking, selecting new operation, turning, and part. Quick preview shows we're doing the right thing. So I'll accept the operation and I've completed all of the operations necessary to machine this part. We'll simply highlight the entire job and run a stock simulation to verify that we've machined the part correctly. It looks like we have, so we can select OK. And ultimately, we can post-process the code. Using a filter, I can find all of my post-processors that support turning, and we're going to go ahead and use the Haas turning post. My program number is set to 1234. I'll click Post, save the code, and the posted code loads in our G-code editor. With the editor, we can even click Backplot and view the posted code as it's going to run on the machine. Well, I hope this introductory video to HSMWorks Turning gives you the confidence to begin programming your first parts with HSMWorks. In subsequent videos, we'll delve deeper into specific aspects of our turning solution.